It is Friday, August 26th, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, joining you from Cleveland, Ohio. Plouffe, we had the day off yesterday. We appreciate mm. everybody's understanding, but we are back here to set your weekend in the right direction in the baseball world. How you doing, Broski? You know, I thought I had a rare off day during the season. You know, we're always doing this Monday through Friday. So I set up a nice tea time. I was going to take my kids to school and then go golfing. And then, you know what I ended up having to do? Go to Costco, clean up around the house. My wife just gave me a bunch of chores, bro. So we're never taking another day off again. Okay. I'd rather do this than do that. Honey do list. Yeah, I did. But you know what? That's fine. Cause you know, I love Olivia. Well, hold on. You know you can have Costco delivered to your house, right? I got to go in there and put my hands on things. Chris. Oh my god, I get anxiety uh, going to Costco. I really I do. S- I get. I-, I smack that meat around. What this feels good. I pick my own watermelon out. Come on, man. Okay. Well, then I think we got to move on. How about we move to the fruits and veggie aisle? Mm-hmm. How about broccoli man at the game yesterday? Now, who? First of all, I can't imagine that he got that at at one of the concession stands, right? No, this is this is him. This guy has been doing this since like '97, Chris. This is a this is a guy. He's this is one of the guys. Every single big league team has you know quote unquote super fans that show up, and these guys you can rely on, man, to root on or root you on, no matter what's happening on the field. I got to be honest. I don't remember Broccoli Man. I, I just don't. And how do you carry it in? Because I don't know how you deal with your broccoli, but what whenever I pick up broccoli, the, the tree part on top, like all the leaves fall off. They always, and it creates quite a mess. I'm not certainly not putting that shit in my pocket on the way into a game. Broccoli is one of my favorite vegetables. There's no doubt about it. It's nutritious. And I think it tastes really good. This here's my little tip for people that are shopping for broccoli. Okay. Because this is what the grocery markets do to you. They make you pay by the pound, right? But they always give you a massive stock on your broccoli. And no one eats broccoli stock. You just don't do that, right? So what I do, Chris? Boom. Snap off the stock, throw it in the trash. Then I put my broccoli in the bag. I'm not paying for that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't eat the stocks? I eat the stocks, but when you get a head of broccoli, it usually comes with a long stock that, you, that nobody cooks. You just can't cook that. It doesn't, doesn't right. work. Maybe you right. juice it, but... No, I take it off, get the weight down. You're not going to overcharge me for that broccoli. Okay, interesting, interesting. Go broccoli, man. I like that guy a lot, dude. All right. No, no, no. I don't have a problem with him. I just, I was curious how you get that in. I mean. Good dancer, too. He's got fucking. Yeah, and the the outfit is like the third thing you notice after the broccoli and the dancing. You know what you'll notice tonight against Pittsburgh Pirates? that Bryce Harper is going to be in the lineup for the Philadelphia Phillies. My God, I think we talked about him three times on this show this week, but he deserves it. So he's going to return after a very brief rehab hiatus where he was freaking unbelievable. So are the Phillies now a, a playoff lock B still a maybe for October or C a serious threat to make the world series. You're giving me those three options, Chris. Okay. I love this Phillies team. I've been behind them for years. I'm not going to stop now, but if you gave me those options, I don't think they're a playoff lock. I don't think they're a serious threat to the World Series. I mean, they they are, I guess, if they got into the postseason. I still think they need to prove it. They're two and a half games up in the wild card. They just lose Zach Wheeler to tendonitis, which I'm hoping – I'm hoping it's more of like a phantom thing. Like, hey, man, let's just give you a few days, a few starts to rest here. He had a couple back-to-back tough ones against the Mets. I'm hoping uh, that's all it is, and he only misses those two starts. Because if he's gone, then, you know, like they've had one of the more healthy rotations uh, in baseball. Like Nola's made a bunch of starts, Gibson, Suarez, and him. Like the top four guys, they've made a bunch of starts this year. So they need him to be healthy. I'm hoping, like I said, this is just a, a rest time for him. Uh, but Bryce obviously, you know, brings so much back to that lineup. He'll be the primary DH. Um, I was kind of looking like who who's been their DH lot. I know Schwarber's done it a little bit. Castellanos has done it a little bit. It's been Derek Hall, who's now in the minor leagues. Uh, he he did thirty games uh, while Bryce was out of DH. So Bryce will go back into that slot. He looks great in AAA. 
he cut his rehab short because he felt so damn good at the plate. That's how good this guy is, man. You take that bigger layoff, he comes back. He's like, nah, I, I don't need any more bats. I'm fine. So I'm happy to see him back. I still think, you know, the Phillies have, they're not a lock. They have to prove it. They got to stave off. I think it's the Padres and the Brewers are kind of like right behind them in the, in the, in the race, but I still think they're a good team, man. I'm behind them a lot. Which is why I'm going to say a, I think they're a playoff lock. I really, I know it's only two and a half games. If you had told me the night that Bryce Harper got hit by that Blake Snell pitch, that they would play 51 games without him. What do you think their record would have been? If you'd said, okay, he's going to miss 51 games. Just guess what their record would be. We, we talked about it. We, 500 would have been great for them. Right. Right. So you're thinking if they're, if they're 25 and 26, they'll live with that. Yes. The fact they went 31 and 20 without the reigning national league MVP is nothing short of sensational. I give a hell of a lot of credit to the players, to that clubhouse, to Rob Thompson. Maybe Dave Dombrowski is smarter than we all thought he was in terms of roster construction, because I blasted him in the beginning of the year. And when Harper went down, I was like, that is a flawed team still. And they have shown out and they have given me the double bird and good for Hmm. them. So guess what? Now, I've been rooting for them because I love seeing greatness in October and I want to see Bryce Harper get a shot at this. I really do. I'm a huge Harper head. Um, so I want to see them get in. I am going to now say they're a lock, even with the Wheeler industry in injury. Okay, man, don't be jinxing my team here, bro. Like this is, this is my team. Don't, don't kid yourself. I know you like them a little bit. This is my team. Okay. Awesome. You can have the Guardians. I, I who's a better Who's think. a better team right now, Guardians or Phillies? Uh, the Guardians bullpen has been unbelievable, and their rotation is really rounded into shape. They're such a different team. They are different than the other 29 teams. There's no team like the Guardians in baseball. I will tell you that. Okay. Not one team. They're hard Did you to answer play. my question? I think the Guardians are just a little bit better. A little bit. They don't strike out, put the ball in play. Dude, they're hard to – you can see when pitchers are dealing with their lineup, they hate it. They're like, yeah. Jesus Christ, and then foul off another two-strike pitch? I got to make another one? It's true. Just, pitchers do not like that. Yep. All right, let's move on to one of the most remarkable finishes of the season. It happened last night in Baltimore. White Sox leading 3-2 to two with two outs in the ninth until this happened. Stowers drives it, center field, well hit, Robert back, oh my goodness, he did it! On an 0-2 pitch! Yes, he did do it. Unbelievable for Kyle Stowers, his first major league home run on an 0-2 pitch from Liam Hendricks, who had just been crushing it out of the bullpen the last several months. Woo! First of all, I love the call. The call was fantastic. The atmosphere at Camden was great. But the question we have today, do you think this says more about Baltimore's season or the White Sox season? I think it says more about Baltimore's season. I think it says a lot about the White Sox season too, but I'd rather talk about Baltimore and then ca- and them capitalizing on mistakes. Now, right before that, that was Adam Engel drops the fly ball in foul territory with two strikes, two outs. Uh, that led to the game tying Homer. And I know that says a lot about the White Sox. It just kind of seems like that's how their year's gone, you know, like just real, like whether it's defensive miscues or on the base pass, it just seems like a, a kind of a bad brand of baseball. And every time we think they're getting out of it, something like this happens. Uh, but on the flip side, man, like you, if you're a team like the Orioles, like you're still down two strikes against one of the best closers in the game. It's not like they got gifted that game. They got gifted a, another chance, and then you got to go take care of that chance, and you got to make something of it, and they did, man. And that's kind of what they've been doing, taking advantage of opportunities, you know, you know, kind of finding any which way to win. And then you hold the White Sox scoreless in two extra innings, and then you finally get uh, Santander to walk it off for you in the 11. So the Orioles are, I mean, they've proved every single person, including you and I and everybody that 
freaking talks about baseball wrong. And it's really cool to see them keep it going. They're, they're, they're a really, really fun team to watch. And I'm sad that it took us this long to kind of like figure that out. I, um, I love the Orioles story and I still can't figure it out because I look at that rotation. I'm like, there's not one dude there who like scares you. There's not one at all. Um, but man, they just, they battle, they battle and they're amazing. I know I said, I think on last week's show that I don't think they will be within three games of the wild card heading into the last season. And I'm still not sure that I, that I believe that they will be. I think I want them to be for baseball's sake and certainly for Baltimore's sake, but I just can't figure out if I can wrap my head around that possibility. I suppose if they have a few more wins like that, they will be Um, like, they got a huge series against Houston this weekend. Like this is a huge test for them and they'll, they'll figure out where they stand after this weekend. I think we keep With saying that, that said, though. I know, I know. And I will continue to, by the way, you have to continue to say it when you're not a, a proven commodity with every challenge that arises, you're not as good as the last one. You're as good as the next one. You don't agree with that. They got a pretty tough schedule coming up. I mean, yeah, they, they, they get, they're going to have to continue to find ways to win. They're going to continue to have to keep the game close uh, as you get into the late innings. That's where they get their advantage. If they keep the game close going into you know the sixth, then, hey, they have a scrappy offensive team. They can you know do some different things offensively, and then they have that bullpen that can hold them down. So that's kind of where they have to figure it out. Um. But man, I mean, eventually, Chris, you got to give a team credit. I do. I'm, I am giving them credit. I'm not. But at the end of the year, they're going to go away in our in our baseball brain if they don't make it to October. Nobody's going to be like, man, what a hell of a year the Orioles had. You've got to finish the job. You, I, I disagree with that, to- actually. I disagree with that because we saw even last year, the Mariners did the same thing. Did not make the playoffs, but they're like, holy shit, the Mariners are here. Except that then what's the one thing? Remember, they sucked the first six weeks. And we we're like, oh, last year was just a joke. They teased us. So now we're asking them to finish the job this year. We're asking the Guardians, the youngest team in baseball, to finish the job. Sure. In your in your own pocket of where you live, I think you see your team differently than how people do on a national scope. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yes. Okay. But for me, if we're, I'm truly going to answer this question, this says more about the White Sox. Okay. They can't finish the job. They haven't been able to finish the job all year. Counts one and two. Instead of getting a strikeout, will intentionally walk the guy. Two outs, 0-2 count, defensive replacement, good defensive outfielder comes in, overruns the play, drops the ball, next pitch, boom. Tony La Russa, after the game. I don't have anything to say except that's an excruciating loss. This is a this is a rudderless team, dude. And I don't know losing, what's going on. They're losing La Pantera to a wrist issue now, and he looked like he was just absolutely struggling at the plate and like couldn't hold his bat essentially. So, man, I don't know this. The White Sox are the antithesis of the Orioles, where yeah, like they sure are. We're like, hey, Orioles, like you, you know, prove it to us. You've been playing well. And the White Sox were like, man, like do anything. Like we're poking them with a stick, bro. Like, are you okay? It's been tough. It's been so tough, dude. Let's move on. Uh, by the way, Dan, check the chat for me. Thanks. Um, let's move on to Paul Goldschmidt. Another huge day. Five more ribs. Just crushing it. He is close to leading all three National League triple crown categories. If there was a vote today on August 26th, is he the the unanimous NL MVP? Yes. I don't even think it's close right now. I think, uh, I mean, Vegas has him as a minus 400 um, to get the MVP. Second place would be, by the way, Aaron Otto, like plus 1200. Uh, You got, you got a couple guys that, you know, like, some really crazy stuff would have to happen for Paul Goldschmidt not to win the MVP this year. I mean, we're not going to say the H U R T word. Um, Freddie Freeman, Austin Riley, Arenado. I mean, those guys, I guess, are the really the only ones that could just go off and do something to 
make it not unanimous. I think he's kind of has it in the bag already. Uh, a couple of those guys could steal some first place votes, I guess. But the what he's done, you know, offensively and defensively, he's got a 7.1 baseball reference war right now. Amazing. I mean, to put that into context, Austin Riley, who's having an incredible year, has a 4.8. So, like, he's just gone above and beyond. You know, we've seen him and Arenado team up on the corners to make some awesome plays. Last night, Tommy Edmond and him made an incredible play. Edmond laid out to his left on a like a line drive, knocked it down, gets up, throws the ball up the right field line. And for a first base, a right-handed first baseman to go up the right field line and keep his foot on the base is so, so difficult. And he picked the ball on that too. So like he is, he changes the game in so many different ways. If I don't want to, I'm just, I'm going to go long on this, Chris, but you just got to let, let me rant a little bit here. Okay. As a left side of the infield player, having a first baseman that you can trust over there is paramount. Like if you don't have trust in your first baseman, you start to want to be so fine and so perfect that the errors start to come. If you got a guy over there that you're, that you trust, you just wing it over there, man, and let your athleticism take over. And that's kind of what we've seen. And you just have so much confidence. Goldie, Goldie makes everybody else better. I guess that's my point I'm trying to make. Like not just himself. He's making the rest of his team better too. He's so cerebral. He's his baseball knowledge is crazy. Like I just, you can't say enough good things about this guy. I'm with you. His defense and his base running have been uh, underappreciated because he's so good in that little box up at the plate. On top of everything else, he leads the National League in on base percentage, slugging, OPS, WAR. Joe Medwick, he's coming for you. Do you know who Joe Medwick? Joe Medwick was I do not he was the last national leaguer to win the triple crown in Mm. 1937 now because of our shift in the sport um where some people don't uh don't look at RBIs and don't look at batting average in the light that we did certainly when I was growing up in the 80s and the 90s or even earlier in the 2000s do you think winning the triple crown will still have that romantic feeling of course, one hundred percent. And you know what? Like, people are going to start to appreciate batting average again. You know, like it's you can't just throw away a stat like that. Like, I get it. There's other numbers that are probably more like that tell you a little bit more about a player season. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that there could be a really lucky high batting average. I understand that, but still, you're getting on base, and you're if you have a high batting average, usually you get on base. And the guys that don't have a high batting average and don't get on base. We know those guys. Goldie has a 420 on base percentage. He's hitting 339. Like these numbers are incredible no matter I don't care if you're a total analytic guy who doesn't give a shit about batting average. You look at 339 and you're like, "Okay. Like that's legit, dude." Like and I'll tell you, baseball players still care about batting average. It still means something to have a 3 there. The 3 is a magical magical number. Not many guys get to do it ever in a season in pro ball. Like if you hit 300 at any level in pro ball, it's a hell of a year, dude. So I know some people hate it and they want to talk badly about it, but producing RBIs still tough to do. And then that batting average with a three, my goodness. Yeah. And by the way, to win a batting title, that's a big deal for a player. Some it's people big deal in today's world and today's baseball world. Yeah, whatever. Did you win the OPS title? Goldie's the rare bird that like the you know the new age analytics only guys and the old school play uh, old school guys can like agree on like oh my gosh like this is great I'm with you on that God I'm rooting for him what what do you think uh, is it even close if Judge is approaching sixty homers in at the end of September or if Goldie's close to the triple crown is the interest at all in so, Goldschmidt's favor. Uh, I don't. Think I think so. those are both incredible accomplishments. So I think I know, both I will think, need to be shined. I don't, but I don't think they will be right. In part because Judge is a Yankee, and we know what sixty homers and pinstripes means. It's a little different, right? We can all agree. I'm nope. trying to think if I'd rather have sixty homers or a triple crown. I don't Ooh, know. Man. That's, good a, question. that's a tough one. The triple crown is. So fun, dude. You said it hasn't been done since 1930 something in the freaking NL. Yeah, 1937. I, I, I saw my man Miguel win it. And 
it was special, dude. And it meant a lot to him. And like that was very much celebrated throughout baseball. I understand Judge too. I don't know. I think I'd rather win the triple crown. I although, so although like marketing and branding and all that shit, like you'd you'd get more off the field with the 60 homers, no doubt. All right. Uh, American League East, Boston swept by Toronto yet again for the second time in the second half of the season at Fenway Park. So the Red Sox struggles continue in the AL East. Just a rough year for the cellar dwellers in this division, or are there bigger organizational organizational issues at work here? We had an extended talk about this um, on our midweek Talking Baseball episode. Jake posed the question, do the Red Sox stink? Like the organization, like, are they in a bad place? And Jimmy and I fought back pretty hard against it. We're like, dude, they've won four world series in the last 15 years. Like they just won one in 17, I believe was the last one they won 18. Sorry. 17 was the Astros. Uh, So you get a little bit of leeway when you start, when you win world series like that. Um, But if you really like zoom in on where they're at now, it's, it's a lost year, and then we have to see what transpires in the offseason. A lot of money is coming off the books. Um, what we talked about was like last year they make it to the ALCS. I don't think they planned on making it to the ALCS. I think they just got really hot at the right time, uh, which is great. Uh, but I think this was the offseason they were getting ready for, Heim Bloom specifically, where a lot of this money is coming off the books. And now they have to decide – when and where and who like they're going to give money to because they're going to have a bunch of money to give now bogart seems like he's out the door they got to figure out something with devers um this offseason going to be telling i have no way i can't answer the question i'll say it's just a lost season i do trust in heim i believe in that franchise the one thing that i said was i don't think that Boston fans are like mad at the organization. I I think they're still pretty happy with the recent success that they've had, but next year they're going to go into it with some uncertainty. And for a franchise like Boston, you shouldn't have too many years where you're uncertain about if you're going to compete or not. That is like not okay in a major market, in a in a city like Boston where they're expecting now to win every year, you can't go in with, I don't know. Like that doesn't fly anymore. So Haim really has to figure out his plan this offseason. He's a brilliant dude. So I expect him to. I'll say for now, to answer your question, it's just a lost season. I think if you were to uh, poll Boston fans, I think that Mookie Betts trade really hurt a lot of people. Really, because it kind of put a stamp on the organization that we're not up there with the Yankees, the Dodgers. I think it's probably those two, and that's about it in terms of willingness to dish out money to keep one of their own. To Braves. Keep a great. Well, except Freddie Freeman walk. Yeah, but they had, they had a fucking plan, bro. <laughs> like, no, they did. The they Red did, Sox but... didn't replace fucking Mookie with anybody. You're right. You're right. The way they. So I think that there's a lot of skeptical people up there about whether or not Heim Bloom is the right man for the job because he hasn't figured out what Andrew Friedman did in Los Angeles, right? When Andrew Friedman took over that job in LA, everybody's like, okay, he was a good GM in Tampa, Mm -hmm. in Tampa, but what are you going to do here? Are you going to strip it down to the studs and try and build your cute little organization like you did there and that whatever dome you play in? And I guarantee you there's Boston fans that are looking at Heim Bloom and wondering whether or not he can handle the big market lights. Because you know what he's done? He traded Mookie Betts. I was like trying that's... to find this tweet that was like, if if Heim hadn't made any moves, like, oh, here it is. <clears throat> the Boston Red Sox in 2022, if Heim Bloom doesn't make any of his recent major trades, Betts in right field, Devers third base, Bogart shortstop, Martinez DH, Benintendi in left field, Story at second base, Renfro in right field, Hernandez in center field, and then some, you know, a bunch of catchers. Like that's not people, accurate. People that's are thinking. Pe- people are thinking about this already. There, I mean, they, I understand. Like they're they're they have to be frustrated. I think you're right. The Mookie Betts thing, like there's no coming. Like 
I'm not going to say there's no coming back from that, but that was a massive like mistake on their part. A massive mistake. Players like Mookie Betts do not come around very often. He is everything you'd want on the field. Everything. Marketable, puts up the numbers, like can be the face of the franchise, can handle anything on or off the field. I mean, he's essentially like we talk about like Judge is perfect for the Yankees. Uh, I mean, Mookie Betts was perfect in Boston. Right. Well, we do have to make this point that we don't know if he would have wanted to stay. He could have played out his contract and walked as well. And there were those rumors, right, that, oh, well, he didn't he didn't love it in Boston, so he didn't want to stay. So we had to trade him and get something. And if that is the fact behind closed doors, if that's what Mookie Betts said to Bloom and to ownership space that I'm leaving, you might want to trade me, then I understand it. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think you may, I think you find a way to make your superstar to want to stay. Yeah, you force him to say, I don't want to be there. Here's 365 million. Yeah, I'm good. I, I don't really want to go. What do the Dodgers end up giving him? I, I got to give it 365. This up. 365. 365. Yeah. Before he ever played a regular season game for them. Did they? Yeah, because they're smart. Did they? Um, they didn't offer him that in Boston, I'm assuming. No, uh, you had heard rumors, I think around 300. I'm not, I, I would have to go look that up though. You want to look it up real quick? While we're I'm here? looking it up right now. Boston oh, offer to Mookie. Uh, a pre-trade report in 2020 claimed the Boston, that Boston offered him 300 million over 10 years. Yeah. Well, the slugger wanted 12 and 420. <laughs> and guess what? He split, he split so it. Went in the middle. Yeah. He went right in the middle for a team and an organization that he did not know. Now he's a superstar in LA, and I'm sure he's very happy that that trade happened. Oh, no yeah. offense to Boston. No offense to Boston. Mookie seems nope. pretty damn happy here. Yep. All right. Last one. Did you see this the other night? We weren't on yesterday, so I wanted to share it. Um, game at Wrigley Field. Dude is on somebody's Instagram story saying, Hey, the lady in my life, 40 fucking years, she's never caught a ball. Never. Like next pitch or a few pitches later, Pujols pops one up. Dude in their section that they had been conversing with, a younger guy who's probably in his 20s, maybe 30, whatever, gets the ball, runs over, hands it to her. She's jumping around. She's great. Dude's getting lifted in the air with his beer in his hand, celebrating. Now, she technically did not catch the ball. Is her streak still alive? Hell yeah, dude. No, this doesn't count as catching a ball. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm no. sorry. You know, if she has any competitive juice in her at all, she'll say the same thing, Chris. And my question is, that's the husband that was talking, right? I'm assuming. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Have you not caught a ball, sir? Like, we need, we need to step it up. That's why I bring a glove to every game. That's why I, get, I bring a glove to baseball today because I'm ready at any moment. My guy Robert Flores ball. would crush you, by the way. He Who? hates a row flow. Oh, on, why? On MLB Central. Because he, he and I would always get into it. I'm like, row flow, if people just want to enjoy the game and bring a glove, let them be. Nope. If you're in a if you're anybody over like teenage, middle teenager, you do not have a purpose of having a glove at a game. Speak, I'll tell you why. Row flow. I don't agree with you. You can have your opinion. Great. I think it might be he's a little like scared to bring a glove to the game because what if he brings it and misses it? A lot of people, a lot of people are scared to miss. I ain't scared to miss. And what I think when I bring my glove to the ballpark, okay, I could save somebody's life tonight. Mm. I am the the guardian of the foul balls, dude. If someone if once coming in hot, Chris, bam, I'm ready for it. You think I keep these balls? No, I either give it to my son if I catch one, or I give it to whoever's around me. Come on, row flow wholeheartedly disagree on that on that stance amazing more people need gloves i think uh god i have a hard time stealing this woman's joy because she looked so happy in that video she technically did not catch the ball so i would say the streak is alive but if she got pure joy by the way does it change the fact that it was hit by albert Pujols? it's awesome that she has that ball we you know what we should do you know what we should do? We, we should send her a glove. Let's find her, and let's send her one of those big gloves. Okay, let's track her down. <laughs> hey, uh, Baseball Today Twitterverse, let's track this person down in a nice, kind way. That's how we do things here at John Boy Media. Please, 
And let's see if we can get, maybe we even bring her on the show and just oh, say, man. Hey, what's up? What do you think? And just tell her, listen, listen, lady, I'm happy for you, but you still haven't caught a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Go get that. Work on this. <laughs> All right. What do you have coming up on John boy media? Oh, baby. Uh, we have a players only app on talking baseball. That's going to be recorded directly after this. Me and Jake going to be chopping it up about the series that were uh, lots of sweeps, Lots of weird mm-hmm. two game series yeah. in interleague fashion. Um, Guardians doing their thing. So, uh, yeah, that's what I got. What do you got, bro? Um, let's see here. Uh, so, Rose rotation, there's going to be a little bit of a schedule change. We just couldn't work out an interview either today, tomorrow, and I can't do it Sunday. Um, so, I think instead of a Monday episode dropping, I think it'll end up being Tuesday with Miguel Rojas. But we do have the Glass Now interview out. Uh, go listen to that. Um, he's great entertainment as always. People love listening to him. So that's what we got going. And we have a special announcement early next week for John Boy Media. We do. We are we are branching into uncharted territory. I don't even know what you're talking about. I know you don't. I don't like this. No, it's good. It's really okay. good, actually. Really good and fun. And I think people will embrace it and love it. I we bought wait. BattleBots. Oh God, no! Now th- this would be my my family's <laughs> colliding. <laughs> this would be it. That would be great. I would love that. We, you know, we should. We're, we're not going to have time to build a BattleBot for this season, but maybe for season eight. I've been saying that. I know. All right, listen. We got to wrap things up uh, for our outstanding producer, the one and only Dan Rourke. I don't know if he's wearing sleeves today or not, but I'm going to guess no. That is Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We will see you Monday on Baseball Today. Bring your gloves, everybody.